Welcome to our editorial headshot, part three. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. Find us all up on the Twitter and on the Facebook at Flurn and uh, contact us. We'd love to hear from you. This is a really cool episode. We're finishing up our headshot with, uh, this is Asa Davis, our video editor and uh, our editorial headshot. And we're gonna be doing some really cool work today with color, a little bit with uh, sharpening and uh, just kind of like bringing everything together. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing I'd like to do, we're, um, well, let's just take a look at what we've done up until now. Really cool. Uh, this was what we started with, episode one and episode two. So you can see quite a big progression already and it didn't take that long, which is great. Now what I wanted to do here is kind of like finish this image, just kind of like bring it to an area where it's just looking a little bit more comfortable. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use my, um, we're going to start off with a curves adjustment layer and I'm just going to click here in the middle and drag that down quite a bit. Something right about there. It looks pretty good. Now this is going to be kind of like creating a, a vignette, but we're going to take a little bit of a different spin on this and make it a little bit more creative. I'm going to grab my marquee tool right about there. There we go. And make a selection. I'm going to hit command I in that selection and then command D to deselect that. So this is the beginning of a nice marquee. Now, we're going to go ahead and run a Gaussian blur filter on there, and we're going to just make that relatively large. Cool. That looks pretty good. It looks okay, but it, to be honest, it still looks like it was done in Photoshop. You get this like banding and things like that, and it's just like too perfect. It does it does doesn't look real. It doesn't look horrible, but it looks like it was done in Photoshop. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to use the same custom brush that we created in part one of this series, which I'll provide for you guys. And we're going to use this custom brush to define where this layer mask is going to be visible. So we're going to give it a little bit of texture, just going to look a lot better. So let's go ahead and choose our brush. And uh, what we're going to do is just paint white and black here. I'm going to keep my flow relatively low, maybe about 10%. But as I paint white right over here, you can see it's just kind of painting in. And I paint black and it just does the same thing. Let's bring our flow up a little bit higher. So I use that original gradient just to look kind of like give us a nice definition of like, you know, what we might, might want this, where we want this to be visible. All right, and now I'm just using these custom brushes to kind of like go in here and give us a little bit more of this information. There we go, kind of, and this is a great time to just get in here and play, um, play brushes. It sounds so much fun to a person like me. It actually does, which is embarrassing. Uh, we're just gonna play around here. And I'm just painting with black and white and uh, kind of like redefining this curves adjustment layer. We're playing on, on the layer mask now. And what this is allowing us to do is just kind of like define where this is and is not gonna be visible. And it's just gonna, hopefully, the goal is to make it look like the background is just kind of doing this naturally, like it's a, you know, a natural progression, not necessarily done in Photoshop. All right, there we go and we're looking better. I'm gonna bring my flow down a little bit more, down to about 20% here, so we can just kind of get a little bit more of a natural feel there. All right, and this randomness is really what, what sells this sort of thing for me. Um, having this randomness in there just kind of makes it look like it's not, you know, not done necessarily in Photoshop, which it is done in Photoshop, but you know, you don't necessarily need it to always look like it's done in Photoshop. Um, Sometimes it's nice to be able to step away from that. And there we go. So I'm just making my brush larger and smaller and really just kind of playing around here. This isn't something that requires a, a lot of thought. We're just kind of doing this as, as I talk and, you know, just making something that looks nice, relatively natural, and uh, complements our subject pretty well. So I've got my left hand on the X on the keyboard, and I'm just painting in with, uh, like, white and black to kind of, like, give us a nice you know, a nice vignette there. All right, there we go. Yeah, looking pretty good. Maybe it'll just make that a little bit bigger. All right, and the reason I like doing this is just, it, it just tends to look a little bit more like, oh yeah, so maybe it was real. Um, so that looks pretty good. Let's just zoom out there. You can see it doesn't look perfect, but that's kind of the whole point of it. And if I zoom in, we can see that it actually has some texture because of the brush that we created. So it's not just like a soft round thing. It actually it does have this nice brush texture 
in there. So it's going to look like it has just as much information as your photograph, which is one of the things that makes it actually look like, um, you know, it was not just done in Photoshop. All right, let's go ahead and paint black right over top of our subject because there we go on this layer mask anyway, because I want some of this to be, I, I don't really want to cover him up. That's not the, that's not the point of it. There we go. All right, looking good. So that's just like a quick adjustment layer and you can go in here and maybe I don't want it that dark. I could just brighten it up just a little bit. There we go. Off to a pretty good start. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to grab an adjustment layer. We're going to go down to levels and here I'm going to grab my blue channel and we're going to pull up our blues quite a bit, somewhere around there, then grab our yellows and then pull those down. And uh, again, this is just kind of like coloring and this, it's style at this point. I just want it to look like this. So I'm making it look like this. Now we're going to bring our blue or green channel up as well, adding a little bit of greens into our shadows. So just like, kind of like a bluish green tone there. Let's go here to our hue saturation and I'm just going to lower my saturation just a tad. All right, a negative eight. That looks pretty good. All right, yeah, let's do like negative five. It doesn't need to be that low. Okay, there we go. So even subtle adjustments with hue, saturation, colors, things like that will make a really, really big difference. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to target his skin tone and I'm going to actually add some color into the highlights of the skin tone, which is it's going to be pretty cool. I don't do this frequently, but um, I'm happy I'm going to do it now. Let's grab an adjustment layer. I'm going to go to solid color and we're just going to choose, I'll just choose any sh color just to show you. It doesn't matter what color you choose. It, you can change this stuff at any time. Double click here on your adjustment layers. And then here, right here on the layer style, where you see this layer and underlying layer, I want this to be visible on the highlights of the underlying layers. So I'm going to hold Alt or Option, and I'm going to click here on the shadows and bring this from the left all the way to the right, just like this. And you can see it's disappearing from the shadows, just going to be visible now where the highlights are. So we'll hit OK, and you can see now we've got this blue on the highlights of our uh, subject really cool. Now that's not the blue we want. That's not the color at all, but it's not a big deal. Just double click right here and you can choose a new color. Let's just go down to the proper color range and we'll just choose something that works for our subject. And here you can see I'm kind of like defining the luminosity of his skin as well as the saturation as well as the hue. Uh, it's just kind of nice. It's just nice. I, I don't know. To me it's nice. I, I like this sort of stuff. But it gives the image kind of like a unique look. I'm going to do this again with another adjustment layer. So let's go down to solid color again. And this time I'm going to get it a little bit closer to what I know I want. Double click here, hold Alt or Option, go from the left to the right. There we go. And this time I really just want to be just like the tippy top of those highlights. And let's go ahead and desaturate this a little bit and pull it down. There we go. And we'll just lower the opacity on that a little bit. So we can see those two layers just kind of like add like this is just a general coloring on his face and then adds a little bit of brightness. I'm going to shift click those two and just lower the opacity a little bit. But it is, in this case, I like how it looks. It's totally stylizing this image, but um, I'm okay with that because I, I just want it to be stylized. <laughs> Let's grab an adjustment layer and here at the very end, I think it could still use a little bit of uh, yellow and blue there in the highlights. So we're going to go to our blue channel and then we'll go to our green channel and pull this in, which is going to pull in a little bit of magenta into our highlights. There we go. And that looks pretty good. And here at the very end, let's just grab a curves adjustment layer, bring this a little bit brighter, go right around our subject. You don't even need to cover your whole subject's face, just something like this uh, will totally work. Hit command I on there, deselect, and then invert that again. And then we're going to run a Gaussian filter or Gaussian blur on there just to add a little bit of all right, a little bit of attention to his face. Not that he already, not that he needs it. He's already got plenty in there. All right, and we'll just lower that opacity just a little bit. All right, looks pretty good. And then here at the end, let's make a new layer, stamp visible layer. So shift option command E, shift command U, which is going to desaturate this layer. And I'm going to change this from normal down here to overlay. And we're going to run a high pass filter on this. And that's just going to allow us to, there we go, somewhere right about there. Let's hit OK. Um, just going to allow us to bring out a little bit more detail. And you can choose to use these layers. I'm just going to hit Command J to duplicate that. 
shift click the two of them and hit Command G. You can use these layers however you want. I'm going to just put a layer mask on that group, paint it black, and then we're going to paint in, I don't need this to be visible where, everywhere, but here especially like where his eyes are and his beautiful man face hair, um, this other eye, and there we go. On this hair is some nice detail as well. So we don't need this to be visible everywhere uh, for a couple reasons. I'll, you know, some of those reasons being that if you just paint it skin, paint it visible on his skin, it brings back out. See the before and the after that. It brings back out some of this detail. So oftentimes you don't even want it. But here on like eyes and things like that, it is really nice to have that extra little bit of detail and uh, teeth and things like that. All right, and then maybe I will bring it back visible on his on his shirt and things like that. All right, so just, you know, a couple of nice areas to look at and um, yeah, you're pretty much done. Let's just group all those things. I'm gonna hit Command G to group them all. You know what, underneath, it's okay, by the way, if you do something underneath all these layers because they're adjustment layers. So if I wanted to create a new layer underneath those and, you know, grab a color and paint around, that would be totally fine. So I think what I'd like to do here is um, maybe just run a little bit of a blur. So I'm gonna make that invisible. Shift Option Command E. We're gonna go to Filter, Blur, and I'm gonna go down here to Field Blur, just because I want to. Um, let's drag this over here and we'll just run a blur right down here and click over here. Let's run another Field Blur and then right up here, this is gonna go all the way down to zero. All right, there we go, and we'll pull this out there as well. So we want something that's going to look relatively real there. In other words, much less than I clicked originally. There we go, and let's hit OK. So what this is going to do is it's going to go ahead and add that blur, but it's going to keep it away from his face, and then I'm going to put this layer back visible over top of it. So we're going to have that blur in there, but it's not really going to affect his face. And then with this vignette that we added, it's just going to kind of bring all of it together. And uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I'm glad we did that blur. I'm so glad we blurred that. Looks great. Let's go ahead and put this in with our other group as well. So this is what we've done. Um, really didn't take that long. Let's just see the before and the after. So here's our before and there's our after. And in here you can go in and uh, maybe just lower the opacity of this a little bit more. You can go in and change any of these adjustment layers that you want all along the way. So pretty cool image, guys. Um, I, I really like it. I, I think we did a great job. Let's see, where's our color fill layers? Let's group those together. Maybe lower those in opacity just a little bit more. All right, so here's our, let's just so the before and after, this is my favorite part. So the before, Alt or Option, click on that. Still not a bad shot, like totally fine. After. Pretty cool. So I, uh, I love it. I, I think, you know, this is some really great uses of Photoshop and uh, just a, a really nice thing. It's a nice gift to be able to give someone a portrait like this. So um, you see, it's not that hard to do. So there's the before and the after. Again, episode one, episode two, and episode three. Very cool. Thanks so much for watching Flurn, guys. I hope you had a great time learning this stuff. If you guys do something similar, please post it in a comment down below. I'd love to see your images and uh, let's get that discussion going. If you have any other questions, be sure to go to flurn.com, type them in a comment right down below. Thanks again and I will flurn you later. Bye everyone. Hi guys, Kat from Flurn here. For more information on our episode, please check out our website at www.flurn.com. Also check out our latest photo shoots, which include turning a woman into a chocolate bar, making an epic burger, and lighting a hand on fire. If you want a free tutorial, please sign up for our newsletter because it's a free tutorial. It's awesome.